Hey guys, welcome back to Item Get. As always, I am Alicide, and today I've got a special little piece from the late 80s to share with you. Actually, two pieces. And those are the Worlds of Power books. Recognize these? Now, these things came out around 1988, I think, was when the first one was published. So I was a little bit too young to actually enjoy them. But, uh... These things were created by a guy named Seth Godin. Contrary to my belief, these were not sanctioned by Nintendo. In fact, there is a little disclaimer on the back stating that it isn't authorized or sponsored in any part by Nintendo, which makes me laugh. Because if anything like this were to come out today, Nintendo would jump all over it and sue the shit out of whoever was trying to make them. It's probably better that Nintendo didn't get involved with these, because as you can tell, I have a lot of notes on them, and none of them are particularly pleasant or good. The Metal Gear one comes slightly close to being readable, and the Castlevania 2 makes me want to puke. So I've decided I'm going to split up this uh, series into two separate episodes, since I have a lot to say about both of them. And... I'm going to start with the Castlevania one, because this one was awful. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we should start with a brief synopsis of what goes on in this piece of shit. The main character of the book is not in fact Simon Belmont, it is actually a kid named Tim Bradley. He's an 8th grader and he's about 12 or 13 years old. What ends up happening is Timmy escapes from the schoolyard bully into the boys' bathroom and uh, Simon appears from a magical door and asks him for his help in defeating Dracula since Timmy is a wizard at playing Castlevania and has beaten it 19 times. So from there, Simon takes Timmy into Castlevania and wouldn't you know, Dracula's entire purpose is to possess Simon Belmont since he was the last person that vanquished him. So from there, they go on their little adventure um, they collect all the little orbs, the crystals, and whatnot that uh, appear in the game. And they end up defeating Death and Thanatos, and they do end up persevering at the end. So now that that's out of the way, I'll just read you some of my notes that I have here. This first sticky, all it reads is endorsements. And this was on page two, because within the first chapter, Timmy referen makes reference to the following companies. Reebok, The Macho Man Randy Savage, Stephen King, Konami, Donkey Kong, Blockbuster Video, Hershey's, Double Dragon, Hulk Hogan, and Bram Stoker. I guess, I guess that one's actually an okay reference in this case. Product names, companies, how did they not get their asses sued off the face of the earth for stuffing all that into this? I don't get it. While we're on the topic of product placement, I should mention that Timmy is an absolute chocoholic. He can't go more than, uh, well, two pages in book time without mentioning chocolate or stuffing his fat fucking face with a piece of Hershey's. On this little adventure, before they leave, uh, Simon brings Timmy back to his house to pack a bag. Because apparently that's something you do before you go and fight evil, right? And wouldn't you know, Tim grabs a empty laundry bag, and this is what he puts into it. Swiss Army knife. Makes sense. All right. Good, good start, Tim. Chocolate M&Ms. A sweater. All right, it might be cold. Some more Hershey's chocolate bars, which he lists as semi-sweet milk, Mr. Good Bar, and gosh, don't forget the good one with the almonds. He includes his Boy Scout kit, which includes a compass and a fire starter, since... You know, fucking Simon can't handle that by himself. Some Reese's Pieces. And some clean underwear. That, to me, sounds like the perfect things to include on your adventure in defeating the Lord of Darkness. I could probably just sit here and analyze the characters of this book, because whoever the fuck decided to write this thing did such a shit job of it that I can't help but wonder what was going through their head. Do you want to know what Dracula's weakness is? How Timmy fends him off when he starts possessing Simon? Puns. The Eternal Lord of Darkness has an aversion to puns. 
Dracula was taking over Simon Belmont's body. Ah, you are a puny little nothing, aren't you? Why ever did Simon Belmont choose you? asked Dracula's voice coming from Simon's transformed body. I can see that my success in taking over his body is virtually assured. Oh yeah? Timmy blurted, breaking out of his freeze. I happen to have already beaten you 19 times. Is that right, mortal? I certainly remember none of those times. You are a silly little thing, aren't you? I shall enjoy hearing you squeal and feeling you squirm when I sink my lovely fangs into your soul. Is that the tooth? Tim shot back. Ah! cried Dracula's voice. Simon's body jerked back as though physically struck. A pun! I am all puns. If there's anything I can't stand more, it's stupid, silly jokes. Really? Well then, Drac, maybe you'd know why a duck fly is looking down. No! Simon's body shook with violent tremors. No! Stop or I shall tear you to pieces! Because he doesn't want to quack up. So in addition to Dracula having a really lame weakness, all the other monsters that they encounter in the book are freaking lame as hell too. They gave them all personalities and some of them even have fucking names. The goblin under the stairs in the first mansion, his name is Freddy. And that's Freddy with an I-E, not a Y. That's how you know that he's a nice monster. Because any monster that spells his name with a Y at the end is a total douche. And don't even get me started on Thanatos. I'm assuming this is death. One of the hardest bosses in any Castlevania game, in any game ever, and this is what they made him look like. Thanatos looked like a hood straight out of Flatbush, Brooklyn in the 50s, who had made a time stop in the current heavy metal era for some jewelry. He wore black leather pants with a black shirt littered with chains and spangles and other cheap jewelry. He wore the classic black leather motorcycle jacket, and on his wrists were leather bracelets with studs. They made death into a greaser. Why? Why would you ever do that? The only look, death is death seems like a no-brainer, right? You just gotta put him in a black robe and give him a sickle, right? That's all you gotta do. You don't gotta fucking dress him up like the Fonz. Just give him a sickle and make him into a skeleton. Done. No exposition needed. I don't need to be looking at fucking John Travolta in the mid-60s. Uh, I can't review this thing because I hate it so much. But I can't help sharing it with you because it's so fucking terrible. It's so bad. It is so laughably bad. I can't help but put something out there about it. Listen, listen to this analogy. I'll give you one more of my notes and then I'll, I'll wrap this shit up so you can go about your day. Thanatos stopped in his tracks. He looked down at Tim much in the way a crocodile in combat boots might look at a snail it was about to step on who was just lifted up and displayed an atomic bomb it was about to detonate. What? Where is that analogy coming from? That is not a thing. That is not an acceptable analogy to make, Christopher Howell. I hope you burn in hell for that. Don't ever write anything again. Fuck. This is what happens when you have somebody that doesn't play video games try to do something about video games. So, like, I don't know, maybe if you made, like, an EA CEO try to make a game. Is that a bad analogy? I wouldn't fucking know. Maybe I can call up Chris Howell and he'll tell me. Alright, so in conclusion, this book is awful, and I realize that I'm doing a critique of a 30-year-old children's book, but, you know, something when something this bad is still floating around out there, I just can't help but share it with you, because it it's funny, it makes me angry, so that makes the video a little more entertaining, and... It, how did something like this come about? If something like this existed today and I had kids that were at that reading level, I would never let them get anywhere near it just because the plot is terrible, the characters are terrible, and there's no redeeming quality in any of the vocabulary. And I didn't even mention it in the review, but the grammar is awful throughout the book. There's no sign that there was any attempt at editing any of the text. Ugh. So if you did stick with me this long, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And, you know, at least you got to listen to some pretty cool music today, right? 
I would like to thank the Super Guitar Brothers for allowing me to use their Castlevania medley, also known as of whips and strings. I'll link it to their channel. They do a bunch of other acoustic renditions of some of my most favorite video game tracks. So go watch them shred a little bit. They're awesome. So until next time, I'm Alice Side, and this has been a really strange and upsetting edition of Item Get. That's one down. <laughs>